We all love a good summer blockbuster, especially when they're well-made, well-executed. Now, over the years, there's been plenty that, are, that have become classics. Raiders of the Lost Ark, that film behind my shoulder right there on the wall, Ghostbusters, Back to the Future. That is just a few of the classic summer blockbusters that have come out over the years and are considered great films. We're gonna talk about the movie that started the summer blockbuster. Let's get started. Welcome back to my channel. I hope everyone is doing well out there. And the summer, the movie that started the summer blockbuster, the official first one to start it was the movie we're going to talk about today, and that movie is Jaws. Now, before we get into Jaws, which I know we've all seen at some point or another, I'm going to do a beer taste test because my good friend Rich from Pennsylvania brought me a couple beers from a small brewery up there called Revere Brewery. This is their vanilla porter. There is no label. It's, they just can them themselves to sell them. Um, I've never had it before. He was kind enough to bring me some, so I'm going to try it right now, see what it's like. Ooh, that's very good. Very good flavor. Goes down very smooth. If you're ever in a Tamaqua area, I would recommend that beer, Vanilla Porter. It's called Revere Brewery. It's in Tamaqua, Pennsylvania. If you're, ever, if you're ever close to there, check it out. There's another cool little brewery in town called Stoker's. They have some good brews too. Check them out. And then obviously Yingling Brewery is only about 15 minutes from there. So if you're ever in Pennsylvania, check those cool breweries out. All right, on to Jaws. Now, this is obviously a classic film. It's considered one of the best movies of all time. It's definitely one of my favorite movies of all time. And as we know, a young Steven Spielberg directed this film. And this film was written, well, it was based on a novel by Peter Benchley. If you've never read a novel, I highly recommend it if you're a reader out there. there the novel is a little different from the movie there's some different plot points, but the, the novel is definitely worth your time in checking out. And obviously in this film, we have Roy Schreider as Chief Brody. We have Richard Dreyfuss as Matt Hooper. We got the great Robert Shaw as Quint. We got Lorraine Gary as Mrs. Brody. And in this film, it takes place in Amity Island, AKA Martha's Vineyard, where they shot this film. And I was lucky enough years ago with my wife, we got to go to Martha's Vineyard when we were living in Massachusetts, and I got to see some of the locations they shot this movie on. The, take like the scene where uh, Brody's going through the kids when they're practicing for the parade. I walked that street. I got to see the dock where Matt Hooper entered Amityville off the boat. It, it was cool to see those locations um, and be there just where they shot it, and that was cool. But as we know, this movie takes place in Amityville Island, the beginning of the film. We have a young girl who goes skinny dipping with this guy. They kind of meet at this little beach party. They go off on the beach on her own, and she wants to go skinny dipping, and he's having a hard time getting his clothes off, and she goes out without him. He's pretty drunk. And as we know, that great opening scene with her getting thrashed around in the water and screaming bloody murder and just getting pulled into the water. And it's a great scene. Um, obviously, it's very low tech. There's no special effects there other than ropes on her waist pulling her back and forth through the water and her screaming, giving a good performance. A fantastic way to start this film. And you don't even see the shark. And there's a reason for that, and we'll get into that a little bit. I know it's become legend at this point, the troubles they had on this film, because shooting in the ocean is not an easy thing to do, especially with an animatronic shark that was built in the 70s. Um, I'm sure it wouldn't be that easy today either. Um, and then, as we know, it's, getting, it's going into the summer season in Amityville Island, and they are definitely a tourist town. They need tourist dollars. And they find part of her body in the beginning. Chief Brody gets called out to the beach, and they find an arm. And they chalk it up to a, a boating accident. The mayor convinces Brody it must have been a boating accident, along with the, the medical examiner. And he goes along with it because he doesn't know. He's originally from New York City. They had just moved there previously, just shortly before this, and he's the chief of police there. He got hired on. Not long after this, Brody's on the beach with his wife and his kids, and we get our first look at, well, brief look at the shark and the shark attack of Alex Kittner, the young boy that goes back out on the water with his raft. And in a very effective scene, and I know we don't see much of the shark, we just see it turning over and in the blood in the water. And there's a reason we don't see the shark that much. As we all know, if you know anything about this film, it's been publicized many times. I read the book about this, it's been online. The mechanical shark didn't work most of the time and so they had to cut back on showing the shark in the film which actually works to the film's advantage and i think it let steven spielberg be a little bit more creative where, where he places the camera and not showing the shark creating suspense out of nothing being there only that there's a threat under the water that you can't see and it works fabulously throughout the whole film until we start seeing it later and then we and matt Bro, uh, brody talks um 
uh, not Brody, Hooper talks Brody into going out in the ocean at night to look for the shark. They find his boat of the uh, this fisherman that works in uh, that works out of Amityville, and Hooper finds his body. While he's down, he goes down in the water and he finds his body, what's left of it. And they decide to hire Quint. There's another attack on the beach, and Brody's kids involved, and he basically strong arms the mayor into signing a, a charter so they can hire Quint, who's already proposed that he'll go out and find the shark and kill it. And they all and Quint, Hooper, and Brody go out on the orca to find the shark and kill it. And as we all know, that is the man in a mission part of the film, and we love it. And at the end of the film, the good guys win and blow up the shark, although we do lose Quint. Now look, I, I glossed over a lot of things. It's a classic movie. I assume most of you have seen it. If you've never seen it, I'm gonna tell you right now before I give my rating. Check Jaws out. This is the perfect time of year. I know when I was a kid, we, my father always rented Jaws around this time of the year, around 4th of July, and we'd all sit down as a family, my sister, my mom, and dad, and we'd watch this film every summer, like clockwork. My dad would go rent this from Broad Street Video in Tamaqua, and we'd sit down as a family and watch it right around 4th of July, either on the 4th of July or right around that time. It's a great family tradition. I just watched it this evening before I'm reviewing this again, um, and I love this film. I watch it at least once a year, sometimes twice. It's an absolute classic. There's always that there's an awesome scene with Quint when he's retelling the story of his time on the USS Indianapolis when they're delivering the bomb and the ship goes down and all these men get eaten by sharks. It's a fantastic, Robert Shaw should have gotten an Academy Award just for that speech alone. Um, he's fantastic in that scene. He's fantastic in the whole movie. So is everybody else. The actors are fantastic across the board. Steven Spielberg directs the shit out of this movie and with problems, problems with the shark, mechanical shark, he had to get creative, and it shows in the film that you can create so much suspense without showing the monster, which is always a good thing to do, and then show it in the right moments, which he does. He picks the perfect moments, and I just love this film. If I was going to rate Jaws, this is one, one of these movies I consider a perfect movie. I give Jaws a 10 out of 10. I love this film. You can nitpick a little things here and there because it was released in 1975, but to me, it's a perfect movie. The characters work. The story works. The thrills are there. It's just an awesome time, and this is the granddaddy. This is the one that started it all for summer blockbusters. And if you've never seen it, highly recommend it, obviously. 10 out of 10 for Jaws. Obviously, I'm assuming most of you have seen it. What are your thoughts on this movie? Is this a movie you watch every summer around this time of year? Leave a comment down below. Let me know. Hit the thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button. Share this video. I'd greatly appreciate any one of those three. Have a great weekend. Take care of each other, and I will be back soon with another review. Thanks. Bye.